<laughs> because I care about you. You do. And your appearance on the internet. I wouldn't want them knowing that you're a terrible alcoholic. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Oh dear. Do we have to do we have to record another intro now? Nah, that's alright. Good evening, friends, lovers, others. Welcome back to the Antisocial Gamers Podcast. We might be better on this episode, I swear. Oh, please this... don't please don't hang up. And that that voice you heard there, the lovely voice, that is Robert. Hi. Hello, Robert. How are you doing this past week? I am fun. Despite what we talked about in the intro there. Oi, mate. <laughs> Oi, mate. <laughs> Oi, mate. I'm fantabulous, actually. Good. Yeah. You, you better be, because you are the star of a new Broadway musical. Really? Oh, good. We, so one of us is getting a text. Oh, shit, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Robert, you're so <laughs> professional. I don't even know if it's me. We'll see who vibrates. Well, I'm... Oh, yeah, I turned my phone on silent, so I wouldn't even know if I vibrate. Oh, my God. I'm such a profession. <laughs> I'm such a profession. Um, but yeah, this. Uh, also, what do you mean, uh, Broadway? Um, I don't know. Musical. I don't know. He's... You're in some musicals. I thought you had a. The, the, the I audience... thought you had a bit prepared. No, the the audience. Well, the audience at home might not know, but Robert, <laughs> he he does sing in his spare time. I know he doesn't really get up to that much on the podcast, but you, you may be surprised to know he does actually sing at some points. I I proper sing like I'm I'm not a basic hoe. Yeah, he's um, he's starring in Tom and Jerry the Musical, <laughs> which doesn't actually have any lyrics. It's just a lot of screaming and a lot of blood. Why am I friends like, with you? <laughs> if you've seen a Tarantino, it's, it, it is actually directed by Tarantino. This is his final um, work project before he it's disintegrates his... into ash and leaves us for the nether realm. It's his magnum opus, really. I thought Magnum Opus was his, like, first work. No, Magnum Opus is the best thing that they will ever make. Oh, right. Okay. It the, is their... their. Mm, yeah, Magnum Opus is, like... The, the epitome of their work. Yeah, the... the mm, it would be his swan song. Yeah, yeah. Which is interesting, because the very first song is called Swan Song. <laughs> it's, it's not that good a song, though, because it is just a bunch of swans that have been released onto the stage. <laughs> Although I did hear in one production they used geese and that really upset the audience because they did have to kill them. Yeah, we did. We do. That's that, that's that's the opening act. You release the swans part onto is... the stage and then you maim them. But the best part is, um, every every so often, well, it's not every so often. Every few tickets, there's a little um, there's a there's a dot on the back of a ticket. Yeah. Um, and then you're invited backstage to help eat the birds that we kill that night. And I will say, not all of them die, so if you do get that dot on your card and you are given a goose that is not dead, you do still have to consume it. Yeah. You don't want to see what happens when Tarantino gets hold of a knife and you upset him. Yeah. It's, it, You've it, seen Kill Bill. It goes crazy. It gets it gets a little bit crazy. He, like, comes up to you and, like, puts the knife to his own face and starts cutting and he's like, you want to eat that fucking goose, man? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, Karen T- Tarantino, baby. <laughs> I really wish he wouldn't. I've had to sew that fucking face back on him like five times oh, already. It's, I don't is, know why I'm his surgeon. I'm is, not a qualified <laughs> medical professional. He was so hard to work with, it, but, you know, he's a genius. One time he threw it on me. Not his face, but the, the task of reattaching his face. I, I don't have any fucking needle and thread, did I? What? I'm not a face guy. You know, Jerry down at number six, he's the face guy, but he comes to me. Yeah. I don't think he can read numbers properly. No. But still, I had to improvise. I used, like, wacky glue. Well, oh, my God. He came back to him in a couple of weeks. He didn't seem to know, though, but he, he was constantly high <laughs> off the fumes. <laughs> Smiling a lot as well. It was a bit weird. Well, I don't think you can frown when you're just, like, <laughs> muscle and bone. Yeah. There is no blood left in him. Tarantino makes a great skeleton. Yeah. Maybe that should be his, like, final role in his final film. He should just appear as a skeleton. What if, like, he donates his body, and, like, directs a whole film and then kills himself and then makes sure that his skeleton will be in the film, like, added as a prop? Like like that that guy did with his skull in Hamlet. I'm pretty sure a couple of guys have done that, donated their skulls to the, the London uh, theatrical performance of yeah, Hamlet. Yeah, yeah. They're like, it's like desperate actors, and they're like, finally I'll be on a big stage. <laughs> <laughs> finally I'll get to in be death. held by David Tennant. In death. 
<laughs> so yeah, this is a video game podcast, and we've just made up lies about Tarantino <laughs> for the past three minutes. But that's fine. He's a face guy. He's a face guy. He's a foot guy, actually. Oh. Have you seen his films? No. Well, yes, actually. I, I was going to say, some of his films have like three minute scenes, just a close up of feet. Because right. he is a strange little man. <laughs> is not he little? Little. He's not, I don't think he's little, but not that there's anything wrong with having a fetish, but don't put them in your major art films. Nathan, like, don't kink shame. I'm not kink shaming you anybody. You kink shaming. Look, I know that you have a thing about wardrobes, but I'm not going to shame you for that. How Just you... because you like to dress up as like closets and go to conventions where other people are dressed as wooden household implements does not mean I'm going to judge you. How did you know? I, I, I'm not going to judge you for going onto ikeaaffinity.com. How did you know? <laughs> I've seen your internet history, Robert. We've all seen it. The pictures of wardrobes in your room. You've got a wardrobe in your room, Robert. I know. <laughs> Do you think I would not find out about you? I'm sorry. Robert, I'm not, go- I'm not going to kink shame you, but you are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> BT-, BT dubs, everyone. I don't have a wardrobe in my room. It's way too small. No, he has a, <laughs> he has a bed, which I think is even worse. Oh, for God. You should sleep in the wardrobe standing up like a cone head. That's an obscure reference, I think. <laughs> that is an obscure there reference. Was, there was an old film with Dan Aykroyd where he was an alien with a cone head. And it was terrible. I, I don't remember much of it. It was... I, it's Are you terrible. Sure? Is it terrible? It's terrible. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's just a really shit film. It was, I'm pretty sure it was shit. Like, I, I have only seen it as a child. Everything like that was shit. Like, then, that then film, what? Dumb and Dumber, all of it shit. Oh, Dumb and... I know, Dumb and Dumb is one of the hardest things I had to... It, it is not good. Do you know what the worst is of that? The sort of nostalgic but actually shit? George of the Jungle. Mm, yeah, that's... Oh my god. Oh, I used so to bad. love that film, but... No, no, no the, the issue I have with it is not that it has bad humour, but the fact of it's self-aware that it has bad humour, but to remedy this, it just acknowledges that it has bad humour and then moves on. Yeah. Like, this is the part where we laugh. <laughs> that's pretty much a scene. <laughs> You Obviously, I downplayed just, it a little you bit. You know, like it's an iconic film, and I love it. But it's just, the acting is like bad. It's Brendan Fraser. What do you expect? The Labyrinth. He was in the Labyrinth. No, I'm saying. Do you know what's like got great like nostalgia for me? Oh, what you mean the David Bowie film? Mm-hmm. Fuck off! I will not hear you say a bad word about that film. It's a it's a fantastic film. Bad acting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Apart from the Muppets. Apart from the Muppets, the they're m- great. Of course they're great, but the girl, the baby, yeah. and David Bowie. Because <laughs> it's a fantastic animal. We'll watch it over it's, and over. It's a crystal. It's just nothing unusual here. I've forgotten how to quote the film, but if you turn it this way, it will show you your dreams, David Bowie. <laughs> it started off as a decent David Bowie impression, then got <laughs> very bad. <laughs> It was the strangest thing to see her face like <laughs> just do, panic. Do any of that? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, this is a video games podcast. <laughs> That's okay. We like wasting time here because we're actually talking in this episode. It's true. Well, <laughs> instead of me on my phone, instead of you showing on that me that topic. <laughs> oh god, you're not going to show me like so spooky ghosts or something. No, I'm not actually. Whatever that fucking thing was. Do you want to get on the topic? Oh, okay. What? Do you, okay. I'm, go- I'm going to let you pick, but I kind of know which topic you're going to go for first, but... But I don't want to go for it, like, no, don't, straight don't... away, because no. it's what I really want to talk yeah. about. Uh... We've got a, I, did, I, I actually did research this week, so we actually have topics cool. to talk about yeah, now, which is amazing. always grand. Can you tell me about Nintendo NX, please? Um, okay, okay. So the N- Nintendo NX, there's been a bit of news that's come out over the past few weeks. We didn't include it in the last one, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> because we didn't research. Yeah. But basically, um, according to the Wall Street Journal, developers have actually been getting uh, kits for the Nintendo NX console Ooh. and um, are able to develop for it now. There are some rumours going around. Um, the validity... The, the validity... Validity. The validity of such claims. Uh, they seem to be fairly strong at the moment, but, you know, with these sorts of things of pre-release, they can be here or there. Yeah. Um, that it is both a home console and a portable console. Whoa. I've seen a, um, an a, alleged uh, patent for the um, handheld controller, and it is 
It basically is it's halfway between the bottom half of a DS and a Wii U pad. So it's kind of like it's kind of like this, it's almost like um, an NES controller, but with like a screen in the middle, oh, okay. slightly thicker, and with shoulder buttons and things. It it looks pretty good from hmm. from what I can see because, but it does worry me that they're going almost immediately from the Wii U to the to this NX as they're calling. It. That's such a it's such a you know project title you know yeah. like Wii U beforehand was um, Project Cafe I and, think was the and like um, the GameCube was Project Dolphin wasn't wasn't the Wii something stupid like Project Imagination or... I don't know <laughs> it was something silly no Project Revolution oh. that's what it was um, what what do you think the actual name of it's going to be because okay that, this is what we can do this is this could be our bit we can come up with name <laughs> ideas for the new Nintendo console. So okay. they've gone for the Wii, they've gone for the Wii U. So we're going, we're going for something quite tame, something very fluid on the tongue. Okay. Um, so let's go for the Wii Fluid. Ooh. That's good. How about... Um, How about... Um, what about the Nintendo Wii can't get any third-party developers? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Yeah, while I was looking at stuff for the NX, I did... I was reading something like EA is considering their position on the new console. I was like, oh wow, they're just like giving up straight off the bat. That's Whoa. depressing. Um, how about the the Wii Tampax? Ooh, what about... Nintendo Tampax. What if we? Oh my god! What yeah. if we stray away from the Wii? Oh, well, are you saying we go sort of in the opposite direction, like the GameCube, like a really hard hitting title? <laughs> GameCube, that's ridiculous. It's not though. It was a serious console. I still have one. Do you? Yeah. I've never played one. What? It's no. great. Uh, no, I, I've, I've told you this like five times before, I've never really owned a Nintendo console apart from the Wii. Do you have anything that you can like take um, capture off of like a GameCube? Because it's... Um... I don't think so. Oh. The best I can do is I've got a Wii and a um, capture device that can take off of um, the Wii. I have a GameCube... I have a GameCube game and a GameCube controller that I'd like you to play. That'd be cool. <gasps> you want me to play your GameCube controller? Yes. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll have a play with your GameCube controller. Well, well, like, the, I put the GameCube game because the Wii can play GameCube games and put that in there and then you the, it obviously need the controller to play. Oh, d- uh, yeah, game. it does. Uh, how about the Nintendo Fuckboy? I think, I think we that, have something here. I think that would really sell some consoles. The Nintendo, the Nintendo torture device. What about Nintendo? F- fuck. How about how about the Nintendo? Don't get your hopes up. Oh, oh we're just kidding, Nintendo. I love you. What about um, Nintendo NX? It would work. It's probably going to be cool with something stupid like the Nintendo Next. I, yeah, probably but the, like But the Next. thing is, like, n- yeah, it would be Nintendo Next, and the one after that would be a Nintendo Another One. <laughs> the new Next. <laughs> yeah. New. The Next New. Next Two. Next to you. Next to you. Oh! I love it. Next to you. That's great. <laughs> okay, so we decided what we wanted to be called the Nintendo Next to You. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. Robert, what do you, okay, what do you want out of this new Nintendo console? Because from what I understand, the Wii was a creative success. A yeah. commercial failure, but a creative success. What would you like to see out of the Nintendo NX? I just want N- Nintendo to keep doing what they're doing, because they're one of the only companies that well, actually keep I... fun involved. Like, like, when they're thinking about things, they think about, is this fun? Like, yeah. I just, I have to wonder why they aren't as successful as they they could be. I think, I, I hope with the new console, it will it will bring in some new audiences. Because the Wii U didn't sell particularly well necessarily because, I don't know, I feel like it confused a lot of people when it was announced. You know, mm. there, I still remember back in the day, back in the day, this was like two and a half years ago. Yeah. Back in the day, people were confused. They were asking Nintendo, okay, so is this just like a tablet peripheral you add with the Wii? Or is, is it an entirely new console? Because the, they just revealed the tablet. Yeah. The tablet controller. And it was called the Wii U. It does sound like an add-on to the Wii. And um, then it came out and it didn't really do anything that people wanted. It was the Wii with an extra extra feature that people didn't really care for that much. What I'm hoping... But it was high def. 
it, it was high def, which is, you know, with all the colourful games they have, is absolutely brilliant. Um, what I'm hoping for the NX is that they perhaps move away from motion control. Yeah. I know it's kind of their thing at the moment, but I really think they'd benefit from moving away from it. And the fact that they're doing, um, apparently a, uh, a household and portable device, it would make me think that it is not focusing too much on the, uh... Yeah, I think if they, if they kind of got away from it and started making... Don't say the word hardcore. Whatever no. you do, don't say hardcore. No, started making games more like how they used to, like... Well... And, but... Yeah? I don't mean, like, make retro games! I mean, like, more focus on actual well, gameplay rather than being like, also, this is how we can implement motion controls ham-fistedly. I want, I want them to take some risks. I mean, look at how well Splatoon did. Yeah, oh Look my at God. how well Bayonetta 2 did. It was fantastic. It was a fantastic game, and it, it did well. And it got them to sell a fuck ton of Wii U. Yeah, but mostly because people were angry the fact it wasn't going to be on the PS3 back, <laughs> back at that time. I'm mainly talking about Splatoon. Like, definitely, that that for sure got someone to buy Yeah, I, I want to see them try some new IPs, because it, it works for them. And mm -hmm. Splatoon is an absolutely wonderful way of showing that Nintendo, its head is in the modern era, but it still has its own kooky imagination. Yeah. It was a shooter game that you used paint guns. Yeah. How can you not be better than that? I'll tell you how you can be better. Make them kids and squids at the same time. Uh! Teenage Mutant Ninja Squidwoods. <laughs> Oh, no. That's what they are, Robert. Don't don't hate my creative flow. Um, I don't hate your creative. Flow. Don't hate my flow. I love your funky fresh flow. Love, drink of my natural flow. <laughs> I I really don't want to drink your flow, good sir. It's rare that I get a flow. It's like one time a month where I get my natural flow. Just eat it up. Eat my flow. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, <laughs> feed me the flow. <laughs> but yeah, it just it, uh. <laughs> it confuses me more than anything that Nintendo, the, the the Wii U itself hasn't been more popular. Although I say that having not owned one, <laughs> what a Wii U, yeah, yeah I, I have. It's one of those things of I would love one, but I honestly just can't justify the expense. It's I still love. too expensive. That's why I got someone to buy it for me for my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> I love my Wii. It's U. on my wish list. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Because uh, would, there are so many games on there that I would love to play. I want to give Nintendo my money. I really do. I have a Splatoon. I have the Bayonettas. I have... You have the Splatoon. I have the Splatoon. How do you play... Can you play that? Like, without well, internet connection? No, you see... <laughs> I, I have the Splatoons. I have not yet played it. Oh. Because I got the Splatoon when I moved into my new house. And back then, I was like, yeah, I'm going to get internet. I'm going to have... I still don't have a TV. This is a problem. I've been in my house, like, three months now. <laughs> Why, why don't you have internet? Is it, like, a thing you just can't afford, or it's is it just something too... something I don't want to get into on the podcast. Right, okay. But... I, okay, I can imagine I, there'd be roommate disagreements. Is it... no, no, just... no, 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 no. One of your roommates listens to this, <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna save you now. We will not talk about this on the podcast, okay, I, Robert? I just... I wanted... Robert, To we... do it months ago. Okay. I, I tried to save you. <laughs> While you're falling into that lava pit, don't look up at me and say, you bastard, why didn't you save me? <laughs> Just remember. Because I will look down at you and say, I tried. <laughs> and then you'll be consumed by the monsters. Oh, man. I tried. Okay. I tried to stop you, Robert, but you just had to go ahead and cut off Tarantino's face. Well, you know, <laughs> he helped. <laughs> He he put He's... the knife in my hand and said, you need to cut now. What I find amazing about Tarantino is you can lock him in a room like with, with no cutlery and he will somehow materialise <laughs> a knife. What else is like... The other thing that's really... He's like... Like a cat, you know? Like... <laughs> what? If, if, wait, wait. <laughs> wait. Always lands on his feet face first so we can sniff No! Him. <laughs> if there's a little gap under the door, he will fucking get... Out of that room. <laughs> he will crawl underneath it. He will get out of the room. It's crazy. I'm starting to think that Tarantino isn't human. <laughs> no. I think I think he might. He could very possibly be... Um, um, <gasps> I know what he is. I was going to say demon, possibly incubus, but go ahead. He's the Nintendo NX. 
Tarantino is the Nintendo NX. Wouldn't that be glorious if, um, oh, I was going to say a water, if um, Reggie fils and me came on stage, um, you know, wearing, like, boxer shorts, nothing else, just boxer shorts, and said, people of <laughs> Gotham, uh, <laughs> the Nintendo NX is yours, and then Tarantino runs out, bollock naked, <laughs> and just, like, turns in a circle with his arms raised. <laughs> Amazing. I would buy it. <laughs> well, that's the thing, because the way you'd buy it is you'd go into that game or whatever your local retailer is, you'd say, could I have one of the new Nintendo Tarantinos, please? <laughs> They'd say, thank you, that would be £300. You'd give them £300, they won't give you anything. they just put on a black robe and, and chant, he's coming, until uh, you leave the store. Oh, no. And then when you get home, he's, he's stood in your bathroom with a knife. Nathan, <laughs> what? Then, then, then he... Oh, he he kills your dog, <laughs> and if you don't have a dog, he'll buy you a dog and then no. kill the dog, and then he geese in the nearby. No, not the geese. He's and then, so crazy about the geese. And then he'll carve into their flesh unique Nintendo interface and then leave. <laughs> it's really bad though because I I live in a place with a lot of geese. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Sorry, we got semi serious for a second there. Yeah, we live in the same place. <laughs> There are a lot of geese. Yeah! So I thought you meant your house. I was like, when did you get geese in your house? Well. <laughs> is that because is that why you can't afford the internet? Because yeah. you bought too many geese? I just, I, I wanted one. <laughs> it got out of hand, Nathan. It got out of hand. <laughs> it got, the geese got out of hand. And, uh. then, and then I was looking at the geese and one of them was like, man, how are you going to deal with all of that money that you just you know wasted what on if the geese said that yeah wasted on all of us geese and I was like it's fine I'll just make him put it on your bill no <laughs> Robert <laughs> <laughs> could you please take us to another topic um yes um da, 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 da. tell me about the crowdfunding please okay okay yeah because I, I discussed this with you before I kind of wanted to bring bring up um cra- the idea of crowdfunding on game because this is this is um a disagreement, shall we say, about um, that we've had before on the podcast. Yeah. About crowdfunding. Um, basically, I kind of want to say I'm starting to lean more towards your way of thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Simply because it's it, it of you... I don't necessarily agree with you saying that, um, you know, old developers are coming back to, you know, play off our nostalgia and milk every coin that we have out of it. Mm-hmm. But what I will say is I don't see it... I don't see crowdfunding being a viable option to make video games anymore. No. I don't see how it works as a long-term plan, because when it started out, it was a great idea of, hey, give us this money so that we can make this game, and then we will sell the game to people who didn't who didn't have the opportunity to um, pre-order the game, shall we say. Because that's what it is. It's a, it's a large pre-order system. Yeah. But pre-order to the fact of, we've, um, we've got a drawing of a mouse... We're going to turn it into a game. Just give us $10,000. And then people give them $10,000. And, you know, in the next few years, they could very well come out of a game starring a mouse. And then it's on Steam Early Access forever. Yeah, it's on Steam Early Access for fucking ever. And I just... I honestly don't see how it can be a monetary... Monetarily viable option. I said that word wrong, but we're going to ignore that and keep keep walking past it. Keep walking past it. Because what's happening is, is these games that... Um, like you say, kind of play off our nostalgia are being announced, and anyone anyone who would be interested in that game is throwing their money at it straight away. Yeah. So they've already got their bank for what they're going to create. So what happens? What don't play with my desk? What happens when that game comes out, and all the people who um, kickstarted or crowdfunded it, um, who who have pe- already paid their dues for it, you know, have the game, and like first day you sell like. A thousand copies. Mm-hmm. That's that's going to look terrible on any bank sheet, surely, because I don't see that being a viable way of sustaining a business unless, as soon as that game comes out, you come out with another crowdfunding idea. Mm. I mean, I'm assuming you're agreeing with me. Your silence means that you agree. Yeah, with yeah. Me. No, Otherwise, sorry. you'd be saying am, I'm wrong and slapping I me am in the face. I'm thinking about it, but um, like, and I, I, my my thing is that if if a game is good enough, you know. It, it'll be made eventually. 
Well, the right. issue, there are issues I agree, that that, I, that have been brought up before that I agree with that it's a good idea to go to crowdfunding for this sort of thing. For example, um, going back to ukulele, mm-hmm. um, that was a, mainly a big thing because these were the guys who originally with um, Team Rare, Rareware, yeah, yeah. Um, who made Banjo Kazooie all that stuff, and um, basically they came out saying Microsoft told us this game won't sell. Prove them fucking wrong, and that proven wrong they were because a lot of people. Paid out the ass, literally. Yep. They pulled five pound notes out of their rectums. It was very disturbing. I hope they washed them first. It was terrible. And gave it to um, I, I can't know any of their names, but it's fine. To the ukuleles. To the ukuleles. Um, I keep trying to remember the musician guy's name. But oh, Grant Kirkhope. Grant Kirkhope. I was thinking of Terry for some reason. No. He, he look. He has a face of a Terry. Yeah. <laughs> to Grant Kirkhope, and he goes, "What the fuck is this?" And he wipes the shit off the five pound note, and then he goes by himself. He goes to buy himself a sausage roll <laughs> from Greg's. <laughs> okay. Um, Do you have any counterpoints or anything you want to say? The, to the, me? the only thing I could think that crowdfunding would be useful for is maybe at, at a, like setting it low, but helping someone make a prototype to well, yeah, take okay, to is... a to a publisher. This is something like, that's... Um, if the game is good enough, then it will be made. Well, this is something that came up recently regarding crowdfunding, uh, the game Indivisible. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, there was a prototype released um, of essentially... It's essentially what you're saying. They made a prototype for a game that they want to make a fully flash game that they released for free. Um, I believe it was for free, or it could be a part of the tier. I'm pretty sure it was for free. I've right. not checked. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. Don't, don't go to Indivisible and say, uh, Nathan said this game was free, so I want it for free now, please. <laughs> No, it's it's just a demo of what their core gameplay is and what it is, and it's a it's a it's a contained thirty minute experience about that sort mm-hmm. of time, and you know it's it's very functional. It does what it it does what it needs to. It introduces characters. It does what the game will do. Yeah, which is a good idea. And the reason they started this whole crowdfunding was apparently they were screwed about by publishers, and they wanted to um, just just make sure that this is a sort of game that would sell crowdfund. And, yeah, um, but. With recent events, like the whole thing with, um... Uh, I can't remember his name, but the guy who originally did Mega Man's... Oh, right, yeah. Um, I know who you're talking about, but... Pfft. Yeah, but he, obviously he left Capcom and said, Hey, I'm gonna make Mega Man, but not call it Mega Man. Give me money, please. Mighty number nine. Mighty number nine. And, um, yeah, lots of people gave him money for that game, but he's... I think he's more... Uh, he's good at announcing games. Doesn't seem to be making very many of them at the moment, though. Mm. Because, like, one of the... I can't remember the name of it. Something to do with, like, Red or Crimson Warrior or something stupid like that. Basically, it was a whole thing of, hey, give us, like, a million pounds, and then we will go to a publisher and see if they want us to make this game. Like, th- that was the whole thing with, um... Uh, Sh- Shen- is it Shenmue 3? Shenmue, yeah. Yeah, Shenmue 3, where it was like, hey, we've made ten million dollars. We still need more money, because Sony's not that confident in the project. Like, they, they earned money so they could say to Sony, hey, give us money, we already have money. Um. And this is kind of why I'm thinking, this isn't going to be a... Th- <laughs> this is this is going to become so AAA orientated... Yeah, exactly. ...that it's just not going to work. Like, you know, can you imagine a day in the future where Microsoft announce, announces Halo 6... Um, yeah, give us five million dollars. We'll have a we'll, and we might make a game for you in two years. It's not going to be very good. If you give us twenty do- twenty million dollars, though, we'll make a fully flash game like like you've always wanted. Isn't that right, little Timmy in the front row there? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Answer <laughs> me, you coward. <laughs> Why? Why, Timmy? Because he didn't. He pirated a Halo game once, he, and he's only five and has no arms. <laughs> He's not allowed to play Halo at that age. Poor thing. <laughs> poor little Timmy. <laughs> Leave poor Timmy alone. <laughs> it's been a very surreal episode so far. Oh, Timmy! I think we're making up for last week at least. Oh, he's so sad. What are we talking? Okay, so anything else you want to talk about with regards to um, crowdfunding? Because I feel like I feel like we kind of made our points. Yeah. Anything you disagree with still? No, or... I thought you were going to tell me something about crowdfunding, like a crowdfunding no, game hasn't... that you hate. <laughs> no, there isn't. That's the thing. It's not like there's actually anything coming out that I strongly disagree with. I had my issues with Shenmue Three, and uh, like I say, that weird 
Um, Inafune, that's his name. Inafune game that was like, yeah, we want oh, we want you to KJ yeah. Inafune, um, where they said, hey, give us money and we will go to somewhere else and ask them to give us money. But but what about what about a dating simulator? Oh yeah, that was that was something that Robert and I found before the uh, the podcast. I say Robert and I, I found it. And then he showed me, and I went, what? I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, oh, yeah, look up the video if you can. It is a game on Indiegogo called um, Angels with Scaly Wings. <laughs> the video the video starts off, it looks like it's been, like, entirely drawn in, like... Flash. It, flash, yeah. It's not, it's not the prettiest game, I will say that. It starts off with... Um, you know what looks to be like a dragon murder mystery, like a Ooh. like a story. What are they called? Visual novels. Yeah. It's like, like kind of a visual novel, but like within a minute, it kind of turns into a dragon dating sim, and you're like flirting with a white dragon in a suit and a tie who's blushing behind his horned nose, and <laughs> it, it it's weird. But the thing is, I don't. There didn't seem to be a shred of irony throughout that entire video, did there? Fucking furries. Like, like her toeful boyfriend. At least you could tell that this was making fun. Her toeful boyfriend is amazing. <laughs> it was making fun of dating simulators and just how ridiculous the entire concept. This it feels a little bit too genuine. Well, uh, and don't get me wrong, I like dating sims, because I think they're... I, 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 I don't know, what is wrong with me? I can't be doing with them, Robert. Really? Can't be doing with them. It's because it, it's, it's my fault, because I, I fell into a trap. Like, I played a visual novel once, and then I was like, oh, this is really cool. Oh, like, I know, you, I, you've said before that you like visual yeah, novels. Yeah, I was like, this, is a, this has really cool aspects, and then I played something else, I was like, this is a dating sim. I'm strangely not... <laughs> Not, not, not into it. <laughs> I, I've I've played some dating sims online that would. I just thought this is boring. <sighs> yeah, that was my reaction to them. Not the least bit pornographic either. So that cheated me. Disappoint. Dis a much disappoint. There were yeah. no nipples. I played one um, because I saw someone I liked on the internet playing it, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna play it." And who's like, this person that you liked? A uh, Dodger. Oh, is this one of the the optional podcasts? Yeah, people? yeah. Um, but uh, I was playing it um, on the on the concept of like you'll probably be able to bang one of these boys, and I was like, Ooh. yes, I want to be a bang boy. Yes, and then I played through the entire game, and the most you get is like uh, one shot of the girl blushing while the b- boy like kisses her, and it's like, oh. oh. I was expecting peen. <laughs> Isn't that the worst? When you're expecting peen and you get no peen. I was I was so disappointed. I was like, come on, man. I wanted the D and all I got was like, Nava look best. Ugh. This is worse. What's all these white blurry outlines for? And then like, oh no, we can't be dealing with let's it. Not, let's not talk about porn. I want nakedness. <laughs> we all want nakedness, Robert. I want to be naked right now. Life is incomplete. Ah! No. <laughs> Robert, put your clothes on. What happened to your face? <laughs> Cut it. Cut it, Nathan. <laughs> Did you not see? No, your shirt was covering it, obviously. <laughs> Robert, it's okay. Robert, it's okay. Just put your trousers back on, okay. and we'll continue with the podcast. Okay, I'm sorry. So, what did you want to talk about next? Or did you want to discuss more crowdfunding? <coughs> oh, I'm coughing. That's professional. I want to talk about what I want to talk about now. Okay, you can talk about what you want to talk about. You, well, this, this, I mean, you wrote it, so... Yeah, this, this probably is... A, it's, it's honestly probably not going to be a long conversation, but I just, it's just oh. something I found that was funny. Oh, okay. Basically, um... Now on I'm a, disappointed. On, on a cr- evangelical Christian television show... Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly how it's described. Basically, a viewer wrote in saying that his... I, I believe it was, might have been young teenage sort of uh, daughter... Um, had pictures on her phone of a video game character skeleton um, with one blue eye. Now, that can only be one character, can't yes. it? And basically asked, implored the um, host of the show, what can he do to remove these satanic images from her child's <laughs> mind? And 
then the host kind of went on to say that yes, yeah, video games are satanic. I clearly, if it has skeletons, it must be a demented game. They really want to play something wholesome <laughs> and good for good for them. It teaches them about good values. And I'm just thinking. Undertale is the worst example of this. Yeah. Like, this, Undertale is probably the nicest game to come out ever. If you play it correctly. There we go. Because <laughs> it can be fucking psychotic if you let it. I decided to watch the... the. I was like, you know what, I'm... Because I, I was like, I've seen the pacifist playthrough. Yeah. I was like, I kind of want to see what happens if you fuck with everything and you decide to be, like, do a genocide I ca- run. I kind of want to see that as well, but I'd rather there's, play it. There's a part where, um... Flowey you, you yeah. know, says um, I bet you there are cowards watching right now because they couldn't do it themselves and it's like <laughs> and I was like oh my god they knew they knew can I ask because the story seems to from what I've seen it revolves around you being a nice person what happens to like characters like Sans and Papyrus because like, if you if you if you if you're being on a like a psychotic run well god it is I, is it such a different game it is a completely different game. Oh, wow. Well, well no. I mean, yeah, and... I, yeah, I mean, is. yeah, but yeah, no, is. but yeah. yeah. But no, shut it's, up. It's... Uh, it's hard to say without, like, spoiling it, because I don't want to spoil okay, it no, for anyone. Okay. I'm ju- I just... What, so, the story is completely different. Is is the gameplay slightly different? Because uh, you're... Well, the gameplay is different in the fact that you're fighting. Well, and yeah, not, yeah, but I mean, like... Trying to... I'm assuming characters react differently to you when they're yeah. introduced to you. And there's lots of different dialogue um, things. Do when... they swear at you? I don't think they swear. Is it is it like an E-rated game? Like an everybody... I, don't th- I don't think there's any swearing, but I don't think it's E-rated. Um... Well, I suppose, like, with, like, a promise of, like, slight violence, no matter how small, like, it would be like a... 12 plus type game but like um in if you if you do the full genocide run um different things in dialogue change like um if you are in Toriel's house and yeah. you're in her kitchen um you can look in a drawer um and in the in the pacifist playthrough it doesn't really say anything but if you if you're in like the genocide playthrough um in red text, it just says, where are the knives? And it's... <laughs> it's like... It's just... It, it's very sinister. Like, yeah. Um, like, all of the all of the puzzles in a, in a genocide playthrough will have been completed already. Oh, right. Um, before you arrive. And that's because um, you're... S- everyone is so scared of you and they're running away. Oh. Um, that is actually... It makes me feel bad because I've seen a bit of the game and... That, you have to want to do a psychopath yeah. run to actually yeah. do one because those characters are all so sweet. Yeah, <laughs> like how can you kill them? It is f- the the ending is because the ending is fucked up. The ending fucked me. I I decided to watch it at I think it was about one thirty in the morning. All right, and I was like, oh, I wonder how it ends because I watched all of it. Um, like the differences between the um, pacifist and the genocide run. And then the ending, like, completely fucked. Like, I was like... Oh. Like, actually scary or just... Uh, actually scary. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Fuck me. Yeah. Undertale... Okay, seriously, if you if you have the money and you've been umming and ahhing about it, buy fucking Undertale. Yeah, it's fantastic. It is... It, 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 I'm just not going to say anything, because I'm, I'm honestly speechless about how impressive the game is. It fills me with determination. With determination. Yeah. And it makes you want to be the very best. And I, I, yeah, I mean, it actually has inspired me a lot because I've been drawing a lot of. I mean, yeah, he's been drawing a lot of fucking Undertale characters. I haven't drawn in. God, how long? I think. I don't know. I've I th- not been like, yeah, hanging I around. I think, me. I think the last time I drew was I was fifteen, like <laughs> properly drew. Was it a picture of a love heart crying? No, it was anime. Oh, um, was it an anime girl crying? Well, it was an anime girl biting an apple. Was it a dick girl? No. Oh. It was, well, I've lost all interest. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've the last three things I've drawn, two have been Sans and one has been Frisk, so... Frisk. But my, my Frisk drawing is amazing. I should have taken a picture. It's great. Not It's not that. <laughs> I, I did a really detailed one where they are kind of like... Kind of like floating, and then I was gonna write. It's not done yet, but I was gonna like write a dialogue box and make it say "You're filled with determination." It makes me Aww. happy. Um, but before that, I was gonna make like a really 
dark one, but I was like, maybe not. I'm, I feel happy now. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, it's great. So, we actually got some conversation about that, but isn't it funny how people who don't really deal with video games at all just get completely the wrong idea of video games? Yeah, I, I don't... I mean... Is it, is, it, is it kind of too deep a discussion to then get through within 20 minutes? Yeah. I But, like, I don't understand how someone can live in the modern world and not have played a video game. Well, that's the thing, because a lot of pe- a lot of these people, like, people who say, oh, video games are for stupid people, I can guarantee fucking to you. They play Candy point, Crush. They, at no, one I'm point, stopped. they play Candy Crush, or, like, Computer Solitaire, Minesweeper, fucking Farmville, anything like that. Those are video games. And as possibly as, the worst. <laughs> as much as they want to deny it, they are video games. And those can't even be considered art. Well, this is going into an art discussion. Oh, a, def- a definition of art discussion that I go. Undertale think. is art. Uh, well, it is my belief that anything which has had a creative process go into it is art. I suppose. I mean, y- your outfit for a wardrobe is art. There was certainly passion in that. Um, okay. The one that you fuck boys in. Adult boys, <laughs> before anyone accuses us of anything r- nasty. <laughs> oh dear. Come out of the closet. We miss you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <It's wet. laughs> oh, oh lordy. Oh lordy. Oh lordy. Stop singing that song. Oh lordy, lordy, lordy. Oh, that's why Sans looks weird on the board. I didn't give him a nose. Oh, you didn't. Hang on, let me let me remedy this. If you want to bring up another topic, um, let. Oh my God, Nathan! He's got a big nose. That was the worst nose. <laughs> it's a big. It's my nose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. The Woodward nose is strong. Uh, <laughs> oh God, what are you doing? I'm just. I'm just talking, checking off the things we've talked about. Why well, have we talked about three of our topics? Yeah, it's crazy. Christ. Whoa. How about you choose the next topic? Okay. Rah. I'm going to pick this one simply because this is one that I actually did um, my research on while doing Guess What, ladies and gentlemen, I did research. Whoa. Uh, this one is the Xbox One is soon going to be backwards compatible. Uh! From what I read, it was um, November 9th. They're going to be introducing backwards compatibility. and um, Is it going to cost money to do so? I will say, I am impressed with Microsoft, because no, it doesn't. What? If you, if you are using the same um, gamer tag, which hopefully you are, on not you, or personally, because I know you don't own one, and I certainly don't own because I'm not a dirty Microsoft fanboy. Yeah, I and, don't have <laughs> Xbox, because it's disgusting. That was a joke. I'm not, I, I'm not upset with anyone owning a console. Because I am, I am a PC gaming hippie, and I play consoles sometimes. Because, you know, just feel the love, man. I just don't like Xbox very much. I, I enjoy... I it's not even like I don't like the X. Uh, I just don't like their interface, or I don't really get along with the Xbox. Or like interface. the controllers that I, they've made. I like the controllers, but they don't, they did. First of all, they didn't really feel sturdy enough, and second of all, my issue with Xbox was more Microsoft's business decisions regarding gaming. Hmm. Like a lot of the stuff they did with regards to sort of. Um, like pre-order bonus just ugh, everything they did about their exclusive just makes me feel uncomfortable ugh. <laughs> ugh. Ugh. But, but no I was actually very impressed with how well they've handled the um, the, the backs of Battle because as I was saying um, using your same gamer tag as you did with the Xbox 360 all of your digital download games get transferred over automatically oh um, physical cop. Uh, oh that also includes I think you do have to put from what I saw, you have to put a bit of effort into getting your save data back, but not it's not, like, stupidly difficult. Yeah, that's not that bad. But, like, just make some new game save data. Jesus. Well, I know, but if it's... Because you can download games like Mass Effect and Borderlands and stuff like that. Yeah. So if you've downloaded them, I don't really want to think you'd say goodbye to your say, save files. Mm. Um, with regards to physical media... That is currently a bit of a shady issue, because it is there, but they're being very quiet about it at the moment. Like, basically... It, what, it, so, like, if you had an Xbox... like but, So, if you had the original Fable, and you popped that into your Xbox, yeah, would it work? Mm, that's not been announced yet. Basically, there's, there's going to be a list um, coming up of games that will be compatible. 
And this is from... There is a very short list at the moment of preview games, and which, which Frank, I will say, the list is, itself is hilarious. Right. Just of how stupid some of the shit they've got on there. Like, they've got um, Gears of War 1. Leisure Suit Larry. And none of the others. Okay. <laughs> Mass Effect 1. And none of the others. Wow. <laughs> but I will say, this is a preview list. They're, they may very well have the other games on the actual thing, because they're promising over 100 games. To be, as, to be on the list when... There's so many games. There is so much game, you can't even handle it, Brosif. I'm... I think... <laughs> yes? I'm having a, like an asthma attack. There's so many games. So, so much games. So many games, you should buy it. You can't handle the amount of fucking games we're giving you. God, there's so many games, put it in you. <laughs> buy x <X-Bone. laughs> But no, I'm still... Why did I say put it in you? <laughs> That should be their new tagline. Xbox One. Put, put it, it in, in you. you. <laughs> <laughs> why wasn't that my, why wasn't why wasn't that Nintendo's tagline for the Wii U? That would have been amazing. Get a game, put it in you. Put it in you. Oh! <laughs> See, it would have worked great. That's great. But no, despite all this, I still haven't forgiven Microsoft. Because when the Xbox One was announced, and they were having a little press event about it. They said it would be backwards compatible. No, 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 not not even that. They didn't. No, it was quite the opposite. They said it wouldn't be backwards compatible. And here's I, this is I'm probably going to misquote it a little, but this is off the top of my head. They asked someone, "Don't you are not drawing on me again?" That's not what they said. <laughs> they said something to the degree of um, our studies show that only five percent of Xbox 360 users use backwards users use backwards compatibility. Therefore, if you use backwards compatibility, you're backwards. What? Yeah. They said just... Do you know... Okay, now let me tell you this, Microsoft. Do you know why no one used the backwards compatibility on the Xbox 360? Because it was terrible. Because it was terrible. It was fucking bullshit. And no one under, no one knew what games were backwards compatible. You just had to put your games in and hope for the best. I never got to replay Robot Wars Extreme Disruption. Thank you very much, Mr. Microsoft. What's disruption? Destruction. <laughs> <laughs> Extreme Destruction. <laughs> Oh my god! Thank you, thank you for putting over Burnout Three, though. That was that was nice of you. I love that game so much with mouth. Uh, I, I, I love that game with my mouth. I didn't even know that you owned an Xbox ever. I I own an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty now. I'm so disappointed in you. If it helps, I didn't buy it. Okay, and I've not bought any games for it. Okay. I've not given Microsoft a single dollar. Okay, that... I, that I <laughs> feel better apart, now. From, apart from the laptop that I bought, but and the fact that I downloaded Windows 10 on my computer, but... Yeah, but they're practically begging people to download Windows 10 now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love I love the fact that it started off as, yeah, you might get Windows 10, you know, if you're lucky, and then, like, a month down the line, it's like, please download Windows 10. <laughs> we beg of you. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> I don't. I will say I don't. I don't mind Windows Ten. It just it, it it gave me a headache starting it up because I bought a second-hand computer, and the other guy had left his log-on information on there. Yeah. And basically, without an internet connection and without the original like details and the passwords of that account holder for their like um, basically because you can link your uh, Microsoft account, which covers your email and everything like that, to your to your login. Mm-hmm. Uh, without the password for basically that guy's email, you couldn't. Delete I couldn't him. delete him off the computer. Oh, so I had to basically uninstall and reinstall Windows Ten. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Which was not pleasant. No. But Microsoft obviously aren't that keen on sharing, are they? Mm, They've made that very clear before. <laughs> <laughs> With the uh, yeah, we're not going to allow used games. Oh, everyone's mad at us now. Oh uh, yeah, used games are cool. That's fine. Yeah, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Use games. We've always been about use yeah, games. Jeez, guys. So yeah, Microsoft, th- th- a gentle clap in your direction for making this at least seem simple, but obviously we'll find out on the day. I refuse to clap. But, uh, just, I can, I'm trying to imagine all the ways I'd fuck it up. So like, many ways. Like, wouldn't it be amazing if, like, the hundred games that they list, they're, like, all the lowest-selling games that Xbox ever released? Which which would just make no sense, like, because... Well, it's like, um, I don't know if you remember, but the um, PlayStation, I think it was back in 2012, maybe 2011? I think, uh, no, definitely 2012. Um, they had this whole thing of, hey, guess what, your PS Vita can play PS 
One games. Yeah, P- only PS Vita, ones. PS Vita classics, I think is what they call um, it. And they said, yeah, when, when this software rolls out, we're going to have over 100 games for you to play. In the US, they had 13. Yeah. <laughs> On launch, they had 13 out of a promised 100. Um, I think it was UK, the Europe in general got 50, and Japan got 250. Yeah. There's a lot of good um, PS1 games out. On PS Vita now, there are yeah. On, I will say that was years ago, and yeah, they've on the improved. PlayStation Store. Um, it's fantastic. I, I really want a PS Vita, though. I'm pretty sure it's amazing. I'm pretty sure place uh, the Sony have given up on that thing now. Yeah, but there's still a lot of good content. There's, there's on still it. a lot of good content, but I I feel bad for Sony because they're so good at like creating something wonderful, and then two years later going, eh, we don't care anymore. Yeah. Uh, what a Vita? Never heard of it. What's a Vita? Evita, is that that? <laughs> that's a musical. Yeah, that's that musical. What had "Don't Cry for Me Argentina" in it? Wasn't oh, it? Don't cry for me, Argentina. That was a bit Sweet. loud. It was a bit loud. Did you see how you spiked the microphone? Your room was a bit echoey. Yeah, I need to get like a blanket up against the wall or something, so this isn't so awful. Aww. No, no, no. I think it looks fine. I just need to put blankets up. Yeah. Uh, it'd be cool blankets well, yeah. everywhere oh yeah this 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 is a topic that interested me um apparently steam is doing microtransactions now that's just my shocking newspaper headline that i put on there dun, dun, dun. from what to put it simply steam is making it easier for developers to add microtransactions to their games by having like each game's little own storefront for it in, uh, involved in steam rather than them having to like install that in their own game it would have to be just on a part of steam right the only thing is is remember that time that steam did that thing where you could pay for mods yeah that's gonna be a part of it as well you can you can buy mods mods Uh... on there but it's it's not the thing of all mods have to be paid for sort of thing that they were trying to do before or you or i think it's one of those things of um like special developer kind of mods yeah or or even or like pre-approved mods yeah that sort of thing so i suppose it's not awful if anything it's just steam trying to help their content creators which isn't a bad thing yeah but it's kind of it's leaning close to what got them a lot of flack before and which is like hey on steam stay Stay, stop steam now I see I see you moving towards a plate of cookies don't touch them Gabe you know your cholesterol is high <laughs> what are you trying to say huh I'm, I'm saying that I'm saying that he needs to watch his cholesterol everyone needs to watch their cholesterol I refuse to watch it it's like a naughty child if I ignore it it'll like tucker itself out I, I don't know what cholesterol is I assume it's the thing that makes me happy when I eat all of my eggs yeah <laughs> I think cholesterol is the thing that makes your heart like Ache. Ba-bom, is, is, ba-bom. <laughs> is that why after eating five pancakes I hear my heart softly <laughs> weeping in the night? Why are you eating five pancakes at night? Not it wasn't in the night, but it was during the day. But still my heart weeps. Okay. It, it oh. just, it, it's like a soft little <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. I don't know if I should tell you what I did last time I had pancakes. Please don't. Me. <laughs> Is it going to make me personally offended? No. Okay. Then go on. Tell um, me. Basically, Ginny was nice enough to make me pancakes. Oh. Uh, uh, we we ate pancakes together. It was lovely and romantic, and with candles and everything. And there oh, was wow. no there was no candles. And um, basically, I, she made one for me, but I completely forgot about it. And so it went cold. Oh, so no. I, that, so there I was sitting in my room, you know, looking on the laptop at videos of. Of Markiplier, I guess. And Markiplier with cats. And naked. And naked cats. Naked with cats. I, I would say all those cats in those videos were naked. Mm. And um, <laughs> Ginny comes through with like one pack and said, Hey, you forgot to eat your pancake, motherfucker. And I was like, Well, give it here. And she gave it to me on a plate and she left the room. I was like, I don't need a plate to eat this. So I lay it back on my <laughs> bed. And put, I, I made myself a challenge. I put the entire pancake on my face. And tell myself, I will eat this pancake from my face. <laughs> and it, it was a very dramatic game that I... Uh, it was a game of tug of war between myself and gravity. Oh my it god. It was incredible. <laughs> it's sort of well, because like, I had it... like It was airlocked to my face. Right. Like, to the point where I was breathing, the pancake was going... <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, so I, like, I sucked... 
the pancake, like a, a, a good amount of it, into my mouth and just bit down, hang, and I got like a good, basically the entire mouth area was was being chewed, and I swallowed that, and then I saw the how I saw <laughs> I used my tongue to anchor it down my face slightly, and I got more of it. <laughs> But the thing was, the more I sort of nudged my face, like, all that was left was, like, I'd say a fifth of it, a fifth of, like, the top corner that would have been on my forehead or something. Yeah. And it got to my chin, I was like, no, no, trying to lick it up from my chin, and it and it fell down and went onto my jaw. And I was like, shit, I can't use my hands, I can't give up. So I sort of, I went over the bed, so my, my head was hanging off the oh bed, just, like, flicking my head backwards, trying to get it to, so that gravity would make it fall into my mouth, just going, eh. <laughs> and then I stopped and I realised what I was doing and I just burst out laughing and I called to them was in the room was like why am I an adult <laughs> how could this be legal <laughs> and they just oh walk in the room and I'm just there like eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you're making me choke <laughs> So yeah, that, oh that is a game I want us all to play at some point. Pancake face race. Oh my god. Um, I I agree on like how can I be an adult though? Because like <laughs> the other the other day I got in from um, work re- rehearsal. Oh rehearsal. And I've been dancing all day. And I were just... you dancing on the ceiling? Because yes. that's dangerous. And I I I got in and I just kind of dropped my bag on the floor in the living room. And then I collapse. Like the sofa's just to the left of me. I collapse on the floor face first, <laughs> and I just lay there. There is some. There is something comfort- comforting about a floor, though. Yeah, I'm feeling it. <clears throat> Pardon I me. just. I was super like, no, I can't. I don't want to sit anywhere. I want to <laughs> collapse on the floor, and I do that often now. So I will just get home and lay on the floor, but I will never lay on the floor like on my back or anything. It's face first. That's how I lay on the floor. It's yeah. great. No, it's nice. Um, I'm trying to think of. Oh yeah, we're, I suppose to bring up the um, the last topic. We, I mean, just that's only quick. Basically, um, Assassin's Creed Syndicate came out recently. Ooh. It's not it's not performed that great. Not oh. not up to Ubisoft's expectations. I believe is how I put it. Seppuku. Um, seppuku. Um, and Ubisoft have come out and they've blamed Unity for this. And Ooh. and all I have to say is quite fucking rightly so, Ubisoft. <laughs> Because terrible. Unity came out and was a broken pile of shite. Um, it only stands to reason that people would assume the same for the, your follow-up game. And I hope you've learned your tossing lessons, Sonny. Assassin's Creed needs to die anyway. Well, I'm not. I'm not of the. It needs to die, but they're running out of timelines. It needs to yes. stop being a thing. It's a. It, it, oh, so, I don't see the interest in it anymore. So long as people are having fun, I have no issue with it. But I don't think I think Ubisoft are going to start seeing fleeting returns on that game. Yeah, because I've definitely lost interest. Ah, oh, well, this has been an energetic episode, hasn't it, Robert? It was actually. Shall we? Okay, shall we decide on the title now? Because um, I'm 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 torn between um, ta- think... Tarantino's face yeah. cutting or pancake face race. Oh. Let's we go to a Tarantino face cutting. What about Tarantino face race? No. Oh. No. You know, why are you even asking me? Because you already said that my titles are shit. <laughs> no, I'm asking you for your assistance, Robert. Oh. Besides, before we decided, realised that you hadn't actually come up with a title. Yeah, it was you, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> because the way I decide the title is, is that I think back to what what did I say that was funniest? Because I don't listen to Robert. That's, I just, ha- that's I just, how this works. <laughs> this is yeah. how this works. I, I talk, I remember that I'm funny, and that's all that matters. It's actually really offensive. I'm so sorry, Robert. You are funny. It's uh, just I'm I'm kind of an egotist. I'm just not as funny as you. I get it. Robert, no. Okay. Should I make that the title? I'm just not as funny as you. I get it. Uh, Robert, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, <laughs> Robert? I'm where not... can people uh... find your hilarious tweets and twats on the internet? Well, you can find me on Twitter at Robert Has Your Vlog, and um, you can find me on Instagram by the same name. And you can also find me on Tumblr at EctoB1ologist. Why are you doing like kind of a nerdy scientist anime voice? Well, because you see. Uh, this morning I was late for school and I had some toast and I was running and I was like, oh no, I'm gonna be late and the toast was hanging from my mouth and I was like, I need to get to school because today is the first day that I transferred here and then I introduced myself to the class and I said, 
and then like people like oh is that the new girl I mean boy uh, <laughs> it's an anime so it's ambiguous yeah <laughs> and then um, this cool mysterious guy with dark long hair was like you uh, need to be protected I was like gosh who are you sir and then we um, he turned into a magical girl and flew away and I was like Wah. Robert I understand that you are very proud of yourself but please don't bring your Kingdom Hearts fan fiction <laughs> into the podcast <laughs> I, was thinking, no. I know I know uh, did, did your uh, Oni Chan slap you around the head and call you Baka uh, is that how the uh, is that how this anime starts? It's Oni San. San is um, Chan is like a a cutesy word for a girl. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Your older sister. Oni San. Oh, I don't, oh. I don't know Japanese, Rob. But I'm so, all I know is from subtitled Japanese v- cartoon shows. Oh. <laughs> I watched I watched the first episode of One Punch Man the other day. I've heard that that is a good. It's it's interesting. It's kind of amusing, but I don't know. I I I might need to watch the second episode and see if it actually gets more of a central plot. Because the first episode it gives you the idea of the character, and that's it. Oh, okay. Basically, it's about a character who trained to be a superhero, and he's so good now he can defeat every monster in one punch. Right. And he's bored. Oh, okay. Of life and everything. And that's pretty much the concept of the show. Okay. Uh, it, it's got it's got some good it's got some good humor in it, but just no 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 could be better. What I do fucking love though, Rick and Morty, motherfuckers. I oh, it made me uncomfortable. I know, and I love it. There's an entire episode that was that is like ninety percent improvised. Like you can hear the guy laugh, the voice actor laughing at himself. Like, like, um, the, the way that their pupils are drawn makes me feel weird. Yeah, he's just like asterisks, isn't it? It makes me feel really weird. The entire episode that I was, uh, the improvised episode is like, um, the doctor Rick. I say the doctor, the scientist man Rick. Um, he basically alters their um, cable system to pick up television shows from alternate dimensions. And the voice actor is just improvising all of those, like, two brothers in, a, in an apocalyptic wasteland driving a van away from Mexicans in futuristic gear shooting tomatoes. And, like, <laughs> like, towards the end of it, I think towards the end of that one, he's, he's just like, he breaks that luck. He's like, <laughs> okay, is that good enough? <laughs> That that episode is I, that that show just knows how it it, it knows my he- sense of humor when it comes to that sort of thing. It's like it know, it's everything I love about Adventure Time. Yeah. Ah. Oh, anyway, um, I'm not going to tell you my Twitter because there's no point. Um, who dat Nate? It's what he said. Who dat Nate? And um, but if you want to watch YouTube videos, which are m- described by some as mildly entertaining, Ooh. that's some being me, but still. Please watch. Our Until Dawn playthroughs are actually really The funny. Until Dawn I really enjoy. Yeah. I um, think they're I think they're legitimately funny and not just mildly entertaining. No, and I really enjoy the um organ trail videos that I did with Blake. Watch them if you have a spare hour. So yeah, that, I assume you do since you just listen to our podcast. Yeah, if you want to listen to me ramble for an hour with a slightly different, slightly camp man, that's fine. That's just watch the organ trail videos. Are you saying I'm slightly camp? Okay. Ca- um, somewhere on the scale of campness. That's it. Call my agent. Call my agent. I'm out. I'm out. You can also see Robert in the upcoming Tom and Jerry musical on Broadway. I'm out. Directed by Tarantino. I'm and out. also you can watch those YouTube videos on Who Needs Quality. That's YouTube. Who Needs Quality. I'm out. Where's my agent? Someone call him. Robert, Robert's call left. Call my agent. Robert's left the room. Call my agent. <laughs> he's, got, he's gone to talk to the other people. I guess I'll end the show. Um... Oh yeah, also you can follow the Antisocial Gamers Podcast Twitter, which is Antisocial PCast on the Twitter. You can visit the other uh, website, which is... I can't believe you didn't even follow me out! I, I'm, in, I'm giving the outro, and we haven't, no. done, we haven't done the podcast, like, Twitter... Do I, do I mean that little to you? I was gonna chase you in a bit, for fuck's sake. I'm, I'm an old, tired man, Robert. <sighs> oh, fuck it, you already know where to find us, bye. <laughs>